So next topic, uh, just the definition of the, 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 the title of the next topic, statically indeterminate axially loaded members. All right, so axial loads, we're talking about the long longitudinal direction of these beams, circular, rectangular, uh, but the forces that are in that direction. Uh, so for some, some beams are statically determinate, statically determinate, all right? I mean, it, 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 it kind of means what it sounds. This, ha this is my definition, not the books. You can determine it from statics, right? You can determine it from statics alone. The sum of the forces equals zero. Maybe even some of the moments equals zero. But the statics equations can let you solve, let's say uh, this could be the stress, force, uh, you can determine everything from statics. So for instance, this beam is statically determinate. Um, I've got some force Fa right here. And by summing the forces in the x direction, Fa, minus 50 minus 50 plus 40 equals zero. Fa equals 60 came out positive. Positive means I drew it the right direction to begin with. Right, I can determine Fa from statics. And so I could determine the stress in, in every section from statics. I could determine everything from statics. And so when I'm saying statics, I'm saying some of the forces <coughs> equals zero, maybe even some of the moments equals zero. But look at the next beam. If you've got a beam that is fixed between two walls, fixed on both ends, and then you've got some forces, you know, in, in between the two, uh, I, I think I probably have some FA right here. I'm going to draw it that way. It definitely might be the other way, you know? That wall is keeping it from going left and right. Technically, there might be a moment there, but we're only, only looking at the axial. There might be a, a up and down force there, but we're only looking in the axial direction. Uh, and so I'll call this FC. And so if I sum the forces in the F, X direction, FA minus 16 minus FC equals zero, and then my moment equation doesn't help me out to solve for FA or FC. So I need an additional equation. An additional equation is needed. Any ideas on what equation that would be? What, what can we say about this setup right here? If you've got a beam that is fixed between two massive walls, those walls are much, much larger. Those walls can withstand any stress. Those walls are fixed. Those walls are not moving a millimeter. What other equation could we come up with? That might have an FA in it, FC in it. FL, so you said FL over EA. Yeah, yeah. How about the stuff that we've just been doing? Delta L. All right, how about that stuff that we've just been doing? Delta L. Uh, so, so maybe the delta L is zero, like Sarah said. Yeah, yeah. This whole delta L is going to be zero. Because we're going to assume that those walls are much, much larger and fixed, and they are not moving. So how about, for this one, I would say that the total delta L of that beam ABC is equal to zero. So how about this? The delta L of section AB plus the delta L of section BC equals zero. 
Do you see what kind of is going to happen? If I've got two beams that are fixed between two, two walls, uh, a beam that's fixed between two walls, if I push over at 16 kilonewtons, AB might compress a tiny bit, a millimeter, and BC would increase by that same amount. And that's what this equation says. Right? That's what this equation says. It says the FL over EA inside section AB. So I, I just, I'm going to put subscript AB just to, just to remind myself. That FL over EA is for section AB. This FL over EA is for section BC. And they're going to add up to zero. Okay. This F is not quite FA or FC just yet. This F, it, it could be, but this F is the, is the force inside section AB. This force is the force inside section BC, the internal normal force, the internal axial force. So I would need to cut it. I would need to cut it right here. And then I could see, oh, the force inside that section would be FA. But be very careful with positives and negatives. Careful with positives and negatives. OK, this equation right here my delta L equation, positive is tension and elongation. Negative is compression and, you know, getting shorter, right? Now, this equation, though, we're, we're still going to need this equation. This equation still needs to hold true. This equation is to find positive and negatives as left and right, right? This equation is defined according, according to axes, whereas my delta L equation is according to stretching or compression. Okay. So just be careful. That's one of the hardest parts about these problems is making sure whatever you've got up there, like positives and negatives for my equilibrium statics equation was X was left and right. But my positives and negatives for my delta L is compression is negative. Tension is positive. Okay, so, so this right here, our additional equation, that's our compatibility equation. That's our compatibility equation. So let's say uh, our compatibility equation is an equation that specifies the condition for displacement. An equation that specifies the condition for displacement. Sometimes it's going to be zero, like that problem we just did, like this setup. So, so displacement is like delta L. So I just asked myself, what is happening happening to delta L? You know, what is happening to delta L? A setup like this would be delta L of section AB plus delta L of section BC adds up to zero. Maybe it adds up to zero. Every section might change a little bit, but overall the pluses and minuses would add up to zero, right? The compressions and elongations would add up to zero. How about that next setup right there? What if there was a little bitty gap, a 0.2 millimeter gap? And then we push with a force P of 200 kilonewtons. What's going to happen? It's going to butt up to that wall, right? It's going to close that gap. So with this one, I would say that 
the delta L of section AC plus the delta L of section CB, uh, you know, adds up to 0 0.2. So that, that's what I would say right there. Okay, now the, I'm only looking at compatibility, but we're still going to have a statics. You know, we're still going to draw FA, we're still going to draw FC. Right here, I might have FA right here. FB. So we're still going to draw our forces. We're still going to have statics. What if I ch choose the wrong direction? Like for FC, I, I, I think I drew FC incorrectly uh, up here. It's okay. Stick with what you guessed. Be consistent with what you guessed. Right there, I'm guess, guessing an FC right there. So in my some of the forces, I'm so that's minus because it's to the left. Inside my delta L, if I guess this way, stick stick with your guess, okay? Until the final answer, you're just gonna get a negative, same value as if someone had guessed the right direction. All right, I tend to all for walls. I like to guess compression, I just guess one way. If my answer at the very end comes out negative, I guess the wrong way. All right, but anyway, sometimes delta L's add up to zero, sometimes delta L's add up to a gap. How about this next one, next page? What if you have two materials that are inside of each other, bonded together? I think this height, this 1.5 feet, if I push it with a force of nine kips, Probably not very much, maybe a little bit larger force, but I think it's going to compress the delta L just a little bit. I would say that the delta L of the, let's call this maybe brass, if these are two different materials, a brass core and a steel outer core, uh, I would say that this, the delta L of the brass would be the same as the delta L of the steel, right? If they, they both compress this length by, you know, I'm not sure what it is, but I know it's gonna be the same. So I'd say FL over EA of the brass equal to FL over EA of the steel. What would the statics for this be? What would the statics for this be? We can think about it a number of ways. This nine kips, maybe eight of it goes to the brass and one of it goes to the steel. Or maybe it's 4.5 and 4.5. I don't know. So our statics would look like F brass plus F steel, you know, adds up to nine. We could draw like a free body diagram. And it would look like this nine right there, but then we've got force steel or force in the brass, force brass, and then where should I draw it? But the total force of the steel kind of all the way around. So summing the forces in Y, force brass plus force steel equals nine. Right, so we're still gonna have statics. All right, and then this last scenario, what if I have this beam that was originally horizontal and I pull down on here? Don't think about the delta L, don't think about this delta L of that beam, but think about these delta Ls. Of, of, of these cables, wires, beams. Can you imagine that this may not stay horizontal? Let me exaggerate. I think it might go, I'm really exaggerating right here, but I think it might come down and have some sort of angle. So I asked myself, what are, what are the delta L's doing? This one would be, that would be its delta L. This delta L would be right here. This delta L would be right here. Are those delta L's equal to each other? No. 
Do they add up to zero? No. It's a ratio. It's a ratio right here. And so we could, I'm not sure if we should really get down into this here, but here's a similar triangle right here. There's a similar triangle right here. I'll call this distance A, this distance B, and this distance up here would all be the same. Let's call it C, C, C. So it'd be something to the effect of looking at these similar triangles. It's a ratio. B over 0.4 would be A over 0.8. This is a tough one, but I really need to look at this. The delta L of section AB is not just A. Uh, it's some constant plus A. The delta L of section DC, some constant plus B. The delta L, sorry, of section EF um, would be C. We'll do, I think, a problem. Yeah, we will do a problem kind of like this. Okay, so, so sometimes the delta Ls are ratios of each other. Uh, this one is very tricky because I just need to subtract the delta L of section EF um, in, in order to get these A's and B's. Okay, so they might add up to zero. They might be the same. They might be a ratio of each other. For this problem, we'd still have statics. Summing the forces in Y would be equal to zero. Let me draw a free body diagram right here. I've got 15 kilonewtons. I've got force inside AB, force inside CD, force inside EF. So I still have statics on the force in Y. FAB, FCD, FEF uh, minus 15 equals zero, or just say they equal 15. Let's think about this. I'm still going to have mo my moment. And the moment is still going to equal zero. I really exaggerated that. This, this is not, not, it's, it's not rotating. It still is in static equilibrium. Some of the moments will still be equal to zero. And so I could sum the moments about point A or point C or E or where the force is acting. So summing the moments about A would give me another equation. But if I only sum the forces in Y and sum the moments, I would still have too many unknowns, right? That's only two equations. I need another equation. My other equation is the ratio of these delta Ls. We'll do a problem. All right, so let's practice. <clears throat> 